Yo, 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 what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, welcome back to another exciting head-scratching episode of Insane Disappearances. This is where the weirder get weird and the truth that was disguised as a lie gets unveiled. And you hear the ultimate portion of that truth. Okay, that's the one thing that I do not like. See, a lot of us don't realize that we were born into a world of lies, a program for us to just believe because it's there. And the program is basically this reality that's built around us. Because I can guarantee you things could have been a lot more easier if we had the lives of Laura Ingalls and the rest of the Little House on the Prairie family. You know, because back in those days, you didn't have all this kind of technology. To me, technology and conveniences are making people lazy. Not saying that nobody um, likes, that nobody works hard. I'm not saying that. I work hard, very hard to do what I do and, you know, take care of my daughter and keep me underneath this, you know, inside this house. I work hard, but I work hard along with the conveniences that come with the reason for making us lazy because I think that working hard was a lot more understandable back then than it is now because we still have all this technology and machines to help us do the jobs that make us work hard. Sometimes I feel like we're going to end up like John Henry, you know, the still driving man who ended up dying, having a heart attack, trying to be the freaking machine that was doing the same thing he was and that's laying down tracks. We're talking about miles and miles and miles of tracks. And yet, he was trying to be the machine. Not saying he didn't do a good job, but he overloaded his heart. Now, that's the extended version when you look at it in a reality-based sense. I don't want to do that. Okay? I would rather have a life where you didn't have all of these conveniences. Because you get a chance to actually understand the true meaning of working hard or hard labor to do what it is you need to do to survive you know build your house keep your kids fed. so you go down into this little area where there's a lot of fish and you fish for your family you hunt for chickens you hunt for whatever meat you can find to feed your family that's what michael lennon did on little house on the prairie but it showed a better time not and that that was a real thing back then okay that's how they lived this was before all of this crap they built their houses with their bare hands. They didn't need a construction crew that they had to pay in order to do that. And they traded. They still made money. But a dime is actually was actually worth a lot of money back then. You a kid hears the word dime, they think they got like five hundred dollars. Because the currency was a lot different. And they, they, they had money, I mean, they, they also still traded. But as the money started to come in and people started to use that for buying stuff, then that's when trading went away and they turned trading into a major corporation. You know, like Ameritrade, all that stuff. All these things like stocks and all that crap. That is a convenience. It created jobs to where you gotta do is sit there and just run the numbers. That's hard work. But the convenience of everything that used to happen way before all this was a lot more simpler. I like simple life. I am a simple person. You know, I, I like simple things. I don't like all this rigmarole and razzmatazz stuff. You know what I mean? I, I liked, I even liked the Renaissance area because you didn't have all this stuff. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. Tonight, I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about a new case, which is an, actually an old case, but it's new to me. It happened, in, I think, in 1996. I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about my little cousin who is going to be in a movie. Anybody that knows me on Facebook and on Facebook Message and, of course, Instagram, you already know what I'm talking about because I have posted it a lot. I posted it on my Facebook page. So I'll get to that in a second. And I also want to talk about the up-and-coming new novel that David Paulides himself has put out for all of us to read. Missing 411, <sighs> um, 
land, air, and water, aka law, which was kind of funny. He thought it was funny too. That's why he put it there. But nice little acronym. It's pretty cool. <laughs> You have a lot of knowledge for Mary Ellen. Well, hey. <laughs> it's what I do. Okay. Anyway, so I want to get to that. I want to go ahead on and get right into what happened to this woman. This is what the story is about. And then I'll get into all the other stuff. And we'll have a nice little time together. Like we always do on Insane Disappearances. Whoa. Anyway. Uh, okay. Let me get right to it. This story is about a young woman who vanishes and so does the, a page from her calendar, which was another weird thing. Now, reading this story, I kind of realized that either she ripped it from the calendar book or somebody else did it after they made her disappear. I don't know. This is still a pretty strange, you know, story. So um, that's why I wanted to post it. But I wanted to actually, I mean, my goal is to just help anybody that goes missing. Okay. Anybody that needs that kind of help. You know, it isn't all, I don't want to, the base and the, the heart of this channel is about strange disappearances. Of course, it always will be. But every once in a while, I want to still get these stories out there so that somebody can have a voice well so she can have a voice and they find out more about her anybody that doesn't know about it because it's very important that the entire world knows about her not just the united states so that's why i'm here that's why i'm doing this so anyway this story like i said it's about a, a woman who was a nightclub dancer a mother and an aspiring writer okay she had an 11 year old son who she left behind after all of this. Now, uh, a torn from the calendar where uh, uh, there was a page torn from the calendar where she kept her daily schedule. And uh, this was actually around the same month when she actually disappeared. And this was around July of 1996. Now, Susan Walsh, who was 36, by the way, at the time. Uh, was last seen around noon on July 16th of 1996. She told her estranged husband that she was headed to a payphone a half block from you know her apartment in Nutley, New Jersey. Now see, that hits close to home because I lived in Cranford, New Jersey in 1990, not 1996, but before 1996, I lived in New Jersey, Cranford, New Jersey for at least seven years. And then after that, we moved to Virginia in 90s. Well, the latter part of 95 and straight on into 96. And I think we moved around 1997 or 1998, something like that. But anyway, um, so uh, now Walsh, her husband, whose name is Mark, uh, had been home in their connecting apartment with their 11 year old son, who was asleep, by the way. Uh, now, this is what uh, the what Detective Lieutenant Stephen Rogers of the Nutley Police Department had said. Now, uh, no one actually saw her leave the house, which is strange. Uh, now, this is said by the detective as well. Detective Lieutenant, that is. I uh, don't want to get that rank wrong. Uh, now, he became involved in the case in 2003 when he was assigned to command the department's detective bureau. No one saw her on the phone either. That's another strange part. You said you was going to a payphone half a block away from your apartment. Your husband, your estranged husband, lived in the next apartment, right next to you. So that's strange. That means they were separated. Okay. Now, um. That's 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 the part that gets me the most because okay you said you were going to a payphone that was a half a block away from where you lived at so that would mean if nobody saw her go to the phone or get on the phone or even be on the phone talking to somebody that would mean somebody snagged her right before she even got there okay so who could it have been 
Could it have been the Russian Mafia? Because they did say that the Russian Mafia did a lot of business with prostitutes or women who stripped, especially immigrant strippers. They exploited them. They controlled them. So that means they put you to work on the street. Where? I don't know. Because they snagged her and she was never seen again. So, like I said, this is back in 1996. So, if she ain't been found yet, that means, well, I wouldn't want to say the worst. But you got to be realistic. She could be deceased. She could be still doing her thing. But this is 1996. So, that means she's got to be... Now, I was in my teens in 1996. She was 36. So... She gotta be if she if she is even still alive, she would have to be somewhere in her late sixties, early seventies, maybe mid seventies. I don't know, but I know she's way older than me. So I mean, well, yeah, thirty six and ninety six. I'm forty two right now, so yeah, she's older. But anyway, okay, now Walsh had just written a story about immigrant strippers allegedly controlled and exploited by the Russian mob. So, yeah, that could have been what happened to her. And when she broke the story and put it out there, obviously, they got mad. Because we're talking about mafia, mobsters. I ain't talking like freaking Godfather or Goodfellas. I'm talking actual Russian mobs, mobsters. Okay, so they probably saw the story, they saw the post, or maybe somebody else saw it and it, came, and it got back to them. So they decided they were going to take care of some business. And look at you know, all of a sudden, she disappears right after she posted that story. I'm just saying, you know. But uh, now this opened up a threat to her because of the fact that she posted that story. Now this was said by her father. His name is Floyd Merchant. So that would mean if his name was Merchant, that means he was either a single father or he divorced his wife probably years after, you know, she was born. You know, Susan. Because her last name is Walsh. So that means she was married before and they had a child. They were 11 year old son. Of course, married to that guy, Mark. So there's that thing. You know, that's the reason why her name is Walsh. So her name probably, her maiden name probably is Merchant. You know, but, you know, just breaking this, you know, the proverbial straws here. Just trying to get, trying to dig in there to kind of understand stuff. You know how I do. Anyway. So, um,. Wait, excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> Ooh, air bubble. Okay, uh, okay, now Floyd Merchant. Now she believed two contacts had been issued um, for her murder after the story appeared in the Village Voice. This is something also said by her father. Uh, now she feared for her life um, and had begun drinking again after 11 years of sobriety. So, think about it. Your life is in danger because of you posting the story. Now, first of all, you knew that that would probably do that. I'm pretty sure of that if you wanted to be an aspiring writer and a journalist. So, work in that kind of area to get a story that is that volatile, that dangerous. You knew there were complications and consequences. But, to be this big shot journalist and I don't mean big shot in a you know egotistical way I mean but she wanted to be and she wanted to be a great journalist get out there and get the big stories obviously you know look at all these news people like Sharon Reed out there you know she's a Georgia uh, I'm, well she's a reporter but anyway the whole point is she, I'm pretty sure she knew but she wanted to do what she had to do what she had to do to be to be the big the big you know the big journalist, you know, she wanted to get up there with the big dogs, okay, so, she posted the story, then it got a little testy, and what happened, well, I'm gonna tell you as soon as I get to that part, anyway, like I said, so, once again, she believed two contacts had been issued on her murder, uh, or for her murder after the story had appeared in the Village Voice, 
Uh, she feared for her life, like I said. Um, and like I said before, she began drinking, which is a bad thing. So you're using the alcohol to get rid of your stress about the matter. Now, on those, uh, now, 13 years later, the idea that the publication of Walsh's story led to her disappearance. Now, that remains just a theory. Why? I don't know. Maybe because they don't have no proof of that. If that was the case, they were going to do whatever it is they needed to do to make sure that they were never found out about. And that's what people in that type of organization do. They go to any lengths to make sure no trail of that murder gets back to them. So what do they do? They do a lot of things. They buy up some certain property. They buy up certain vehicles or devices, like, say, a wood chipper. I've heard this a lot, where they throw the body into the wood chipper, and it comes out looking like hamburger meat. I hate to be so graphic, but this is a fact. I've heard of this a lot. Okay? So, and... I, I actually know somebody just said that one time, but that's ain't got nothing to do with this. But anyway, the whole point is they'll do whatever it is they need to do in order to take care of the problem. And it's clearly saying it right here. They had a hit out on her life because she putting all this information about her out there. So like I like they said, that's just theory, but it's a very strong one. Think about it now. Now, um, he doesn't believe at this point that there was or there is any type of connection whatsoever. This is coming from the detective himself saying this. Now, despite her passion as an inspiring journalist, uh, Walsh struggled to escape the lure of, the, of easy money. Uh, she earned working as... <laughs> A nightclub dancer in the New York City metro area. Now, obviously her father knew about this. I don't know if he knew about it beforehand or after when he did some more digging into her life and all that stuff. Maybe. I don't know. But, um, so, uh, oh yeah. Now she had been working, uh, you know, in clubs for about four years. In part, Merchant said. To support her son. At that time, he might have been a little younger. He couldn't have been 11 years old. Maybe he was. I don't know. But, um, you know, her dancing experience gave her access to the clubs. Where she collected information for her story about these Russian mobsters. <sighs> so, there goes the reason why all this stuff happened in the first place. She was digging very deep just to get in she wanted in order for her to get the story she had to be in the area where the story you know flourished and that's for her to be a dancer going undercover and still a very dangerous job no matter what you do because anybody finds out about it you're pretty much toast but anyway um now now she stretched herself in 20 different directions Walsh's potentially risky lifestyle fueled speculation that she vanished on purpose. I'm just saying. She could have done that just to get away from all of the monotony dealing with this Russian mob and being a hit, having a hit put out on your life. So naturally, I would think she would do something like that. She would want to get away, change her name. You know, not spend no money for a very long time just so they won't try to track her down. I'm not saying they would do that. It's normally the police that does that. But if the police was looking for her, naturally they were going to do that. And maybe they just might try to get there before the police do. And then take care of her. You never know. I mean, all the evidence is right here. I'm not trying to say it to be mean or anything, but it's right there. It's telling you. It's making me think this. Just thinking logically, which is something that I, I rarely do. But in cases like this, you have to, right? I'm just saying. Okay, now. Now, they did believe that at one time. Uh, basically, that she walked away on her own, which would have been a safe bet for her if she knew her life was in danger, naturally, right? Maybe. 
Just saying. Now, um, he also said that he believed his daughter dance his daughter's dancing uh, discredited her with police and uh, basically was detracted from you know the investigation, which I think is pretty cruel. I mean, just because I know that some police departments do have their issues with dancers and everything because of the law and they have to enforce them and they, I guess they kind of get on their nerves at one point because they got to keep going out there busting them for either selling some stuff or well selling their stuff or dancing or doing whatever because there's a different levels to you know exotic dancers or strippers you know some of them get into the trade of porn or they walk the streets if you know what I mean just to make that extra cash it's possible i've seen it you know if you ever watched uh america undercover and they talking they had these documentaries on strippers and street walkers and all that stuff but they had this one guy that was always the narrator for the show you know i watched it all the time back in the day when i was a huge hbo watcher but you know i kind of grew out of it because he anyway okay so uh let's see here 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 was I because I moved it up so I kind of lost my place for a second oh here we go now now Walsh made no apparent you know uh, preparations to leave home she left behind nearly all of her personal belongings now there's the kicker right there right there including her purse money and medication most important this is what the police is saying now she left behind her only child as well, David. 11 years old, impressionable. Loves his mama like no other. Just like any other son would, like I love my mama. You know, because they always say, the son is always closer to the mother and the daughter is always closer to the father. And that's, they say that's how they're made. The father makes the daughters and the mother makes the sons. That means on either side, or either one of them have to get a little freaky to get the upper hand on the love making or the child making that that's how they, they, they come out i guess anyway that's getting a little too far ahead <laughs> uh but hey we all grown right that's how we do it to get what we need to get as far as getting a child right oh so there you go all right okay um what we got here what is this oh yeah okay but yeah that, like i said that right there that that's pretty good reason for it to do that but the part where she left all her belongings behind that's the part that makes this a missing 411 case. It's not mainly a criteria that he would probably look for, but it's part of those criteria. She left all her stuff behind just like everybody else does. They're either leaving it behind at the apartment or the hotel or they're leaving it in the car. Why? Why do you do that? Why do you leave your belongings, your wallet, keys, money, all that stuff, identification in another place why are you way out there somewhere you could be found they could identify you i'm just saying why do you do that it happens with everybody that seems to disappear mysteriously even though it looks like it could have a human element but yet they still do things that the people that vanish without a trace do by leaving their stuff behind which makes no sense why would you leave your wallet or your keys behind that means you would still have to drive somewhere if you left your keys behind that means you walked right into your own disappearance if you were driving, you'd probably do the same thing, but you would have to get out the car because you saw something. And that happens too. You're driving somewhere, and all of a sudden you stop. And then you're gone. So when they find your car, the window's down, and you're trying to figure out why. Because it's the middle of the winter. But your car is here. But you're not. The long as it's still in the car. That means you saw something that probably freaked you out or interests you, and you wanted to find out what it was. That would mean that you're just a little bit too curious. If I see something over here to make me roll down my window i ain't stopping because you never know what could happen it could be something that's gonna be coming right at you something that you can't stop but you were so urged to find out what that was you get out the car and then you never seen again just like that woman that I, I did a story about months ago maybe last year about her having her little child in the back seat and when they found her car window was down snow was all in the seat and they found a trail of her clothes going up this little hill or straight ahead in this little grassy area. 
when they came to the end of the clothing trail, they found her butt naked, looped over her own child, dead. And the baby was dead too. Try to explain that. But that's what I'm talking about. These people see this stuff and they get out the car. Why? You don't know what's going to happen. So if you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know what that's going to do. I would stay in my car and drive away and go back home. But that never happens to that group of people. What don't happen to me if I see something because of me watching this, I'm staying in my car. And maybe that could be part of the lesson about learning about unknown knowledge. You got to see this stuff in order to know not to do it to yourself. Maybe that was meant to happen. I hate to say it, but I'm just saying People are not going to know what not to do unless they see someone go through it first. Think about it. I hate, I really do hate to say it, but sometimes things happen. Well, I'm going to say sometimes, but things do happen for a reason, even in death. I've noticed that because I learned from the mistakes that they made in order for them to get be in the situation that they're in. You know, in heaven. Would you agree? I would hope so. Cause that's how I feel. I don't mean to be facetious when I say that. I don't mean to be hurtful. But you have to look at things in a brighter light. You have to look at all sides. Look at everything in three dimensions. You have to look at all sides of that one outcome. What made that outcome happen in the first place? You got to look at everything. Not just one. You can't look at it in one direction. Because you're going to miss out on everything that could have caused that same problem to happen. Because if you're looking at it in one direction, you're only going to have one idea. And that one idea is going to keep having you picking at it and picking at it and picking at it and picking at it. Trying to figure out why. But you can't seem to figure it out. Next thing you know, 30 years done gone by. And that case is still unsolved. So if you just move over just a little bit, you may see something else that, that may have caused that to happen. But that's something that may be something that you can't explain. It could have gotten weirder, like she just vanished, which always comes up. They vanished without a trace, and they can't be found. They ain't got no evidence to show that they was even out there in the first place. But that's only because you inched over to the left a little bit to see more. If you have a tunnel vision and you're looking right at this problem in just one direction, all these other things are going on for you to get to the same exact outcome. And if you can't figure it out and it's taking you that long to figure it out, that means you have to look at it in a different angle. Right? So you look over here. It was like, oh snap, wait a minute. I see something. She okay, she left all her stuff behind. Why? There's no reason for her to do that. Because if she's going somewhere, naturally you would have your keys, your wallet, your purse, and you would take your kid with you, right? So something had to happen. But yeah, you seen all the other stuff. You looking in one direction, you seeing mobsters, Russian mobsters. But yet Something pops up where they say you left all your stuff behind, all your shit. Why would you do that if they were looking for you? They, well, okay, here's one thing. Maybe she didn't want to have any identification on her so that they wouldn't find her or track her down. Because, you know, you can trace information about somebody. All you got to do, look up their name. You could probably track them down by, you know, trying to figure out if they spent some money on their card. So that could be another reason why. She was probably smart enough to do that. Maybe. That could be the reason why she did what she did. She left all her stuff behind so they wouldn't track her by her using her card in order for her to get away. So that's one way of looking at it. That's like thinking logically. But all I'm saying, I'm oh, sorry. I hope that wasn't too loud. But you know, <laughs> you know how I get excited about when I be talking about this stuff. But anyway, I'm just saying, that's a good way to look at it. But if you look at all the other stuff, she has never been found. If there was a hit put out on her life, I've heard of a lot of hits being put out on people, and they still got caught. So something still led them, led that death to these people. It always seems to happen. There's not been one mob, mobster or mafia person that never did get caught eventually. I've never heard that. Same thing with John Gotti. Okay? I got friends who was driving a truck for this man and didn't even know it. Merchandise from the company on the front, guns in the back. I'm just saying, things can happen. And they're always hidden with false information, false knowledge. 
covering up the actual truth. Am I getting too deep tonight? Maybe. Or is what I'm saying starting to make sense to you? All these things are connected to truths that are disguised as lies. Or lies that are disguised as truths. Okay? But it's their truth. You got to break away all the lies to get at the truth. See, they, that's how they confuse you. They cover up the real truth with a bunch of lies. But they make the lies seem like it's truth. It's the truth because there's no other way for you to realize that it isn't anything but that. They cover it up so well, you can't even get to the actual truth. That's where all the mystery comes from. But if you open up your mind and see through all the clutter, see through all the false knowledge, you will eventually get to the truth right here. This is the truth. Anything beyond that is a bunch of lies that they covered it up with. And I mean, it's thick, it's deep, it's in, you know, all, you got to get all the way down to the core, which would be the one thing that they have hidden for hundreds of years. I'm just saying. But anyway, that's a pretty big one. It's almost done though. <laughs> I know you guys are ready to get to the good stuff, the fun stuff. I'm going to get there as soon as I finish this. <laughs> okay. Now, okay, I was, I think I was dead, please. Oh, no. Okay, now the investigation has proven difficult. Wait a minute. I, want, I don't want to miss nothing here. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is where I left off at. Susan was a devoted mother. And uh, added, he, uh, her father added that she um, would not have left her son voluntarily. And I believe that. I really do. Now, Roger said that Mark Walsh has never been considered a suspect. And that's good because the first person they always go for is the husband. Or the estranged husband. Or the ex-husband. Or the separated husband. They always do that. That's the first person they look at every time. Good thing he wasn't a suspect. I clap for you, my friend. All right. Um, now, Rogers does not rule out. Wait, wait, I got too far ahead of myself. Okay. Now, the investigation has proven difficult because some of the people involved in Susan Walsh's life have not been located. Now, the and other people that was involved in her life have are, have died as well. Now, police still are searching for a second person in a uh, second person of interest uh, who they believe has information about the case. And I hope they do find them because if they don't, that person gonna be dead and gone too. And you gonna take it to their grave, you know. But anyway, uh, now Rodgers does not rule out the possibility that Walsh is alive. That would be a good thing too. But where? Maybe she. Like I said, wanted to get away, and she hid her true identity and lived as a different person under, a, under a, an assumed name. Or she could be in the witness protection program. Who knows? Hopefully she's in the witness protection program, but from what I hear sometimes, that don't really work. But it does still in some cases. But anyway, uh, now, now, Merchant, her father, he does believe that his daughter's life was in jeopardy. Now, may not be, because... I'm pretty sure maybe some of them mobsters are dead too. Maybe they carry those. Man, okay, every generation wants to find that woman and kill her. I hope not. Because it's not that serious. I mean, seriously. But anyway. Uh, now, the last time... Now, this is something somebody else was saying. It doesn't say who, though. But it says, The last time I met her, she was worried about someone having her killed. Oh, this is what his father... That was what her father said. Uh, she was coming apart at the seams. Yeah, I can see how that can really put a damper on your day. If someone, you know someone is trying to kill you. Yeah, I'd be pretty freaked out myself. <laughs> you know, now, uh, detectives searched the, searched the couple's home a day or two after her husband reported her disappearance. Nothing led them to believe any criminal act occurred in the home. Thank goodness. But her wall calendar seized during the initial investigation was missing the month of July. And that's what I talked about earlier. 
There's something weird about that. Who and why would this person remove that entire page of July? Did she mark down something stating where she was going? Did she maybe have some information about the story that she was actually conducting for, you know, the news? Maybe. I don't know. That could be it. Maybe they got into her home and stole the calendar or stole that page on the calendar so nobody would never find out, you know, what was on it. The question is, what was on it? That's what we want to know. It had to have been something pretty damning you know damning for them to actually do that and obviously it was the mob, the russian mobsters that did it for that whole page to be ripped out or well, maybe she did it so nobody would find out who they were i don't know or where they were maybe she was marking all that stuff down on her calendar each time she went out there doing her thing to get the story that she needed you know for the newspaper who knows it's a definite possibility i'm just saying okay now to me, that's significant. This is what the uh, detective was saying. Uh, did she have something planned that someone didn't want us to see? Maybe she was one of them. Maybe she had to go under even deeper and join the Russian mafia to get the story. Maybe. And maybe they found out who she truly was. Who knows? Now, um... The police say they are still investigating. Anyone with information can contact the Nutley Police Department at 973-28... Oh, wait, that's 9. <laughs> 284 Now, understand that there are two heartbroken parents who need closure on this. If anyone has information, or if the person who knows what happens uh, reads this, let us know. If they are if they are directly involved, we would work with prosecutors to make sure the right thing is done. Because when it comes to certain types of information about something. They tend to go in for the juggler and instantly think that you got something to do with it. You may know something about it, but that don't mean you got something to do with it. You just may have some information about it that no one else did know. Or maybe you were just too scared to put it out there because you may have been the one that would end up just like her too. I mean, look at what happened with her. She did the same thing, trying to get information on them. And look what happens. She disappears. Now, with them having that information, maybe she confided in them gave them the information before that happened and now they got it so they wanted to talk about it but they got to have they had to make sure that they will be taken care of after the fact especially during the trial that's why they said make sure that the prosecutors do things right because they could either slander that person and make them say she had a lot to do with it or he had a lot to do with it so they throw you in jail for like what 40 years to life <laughs> that's scary but i i wouldn't even want to spend seven hours in a jail cell. That's just no. That just ain't me. But anyway, guys, on to the other stuff. Now, I already talked about the book. In between me trying to talk about all this, but what I also wanted to talk about was my little cousin Grant Yeager. Grant Yeager. He is an aspiring actor, my friends. Like I said, if you were on Facebook and you're my friend on Facebook, you would have seen my post about my little baby cousin looking all dapper, walking on the red carpet. <laughs> red carpet event, people. For a new movie that's coming out called, ready for this? Monsters and Men. Monsters and Men. It's a story about him. Well, not about him, but in the movie, he plays the son of a police officer. So that means he has a speaking role. And a very big one, I would imagine. Because think about it. He's going to work. He's doing his thing. He's coming home to his home and talk to his son. So they're doing their little father-son thing. They're talking. They're probably playing. He's probably making them dinner. He may be a single father. Who knows? He may be uh, the husband of a woman who had his child. Maybe. I don't know. But you got to find out on October 5th. Dates may change, but that's what I have been told by his mother. That it will be everywhere on October 
fifth. Remember, that is Monsters and Men. October 5th, Friday. And that's my day also. I ain't got to call in or take leave to go see my little cousin do his thing in a huge movie that's going to be in the theaters. I love it. And you want to know why? It runs in the family, though, because I also have another cousin who's an actual actor that I've been watching ever since I was a kid. His name is Miguel Nunez Jr. Give me a shout out to my friend, my cousin. He, my friends, played in a lot of movies, if you've seen him. One in particular, Life. You know, the prisoner movie where Martin Lawrence and uh, Eddie Murphy played these two prisoners. Real people. I just recently found out that it was a true story. I think I heard about it back then, but I wasn't really paying attention to it. But when I found out it was a true story a couple of days ago, they actually talked to the actual men who spent their entire life in prison. They were like 80, 90 years old by the time they finally got out and was exonerated. Okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, my cousin was in that movie, too. He played the guy that had the red headscarf on his head. The one that was trying to run and get out of jail and, you know, get shot in the back and killed. And he played a homosexual man. That was my cousin. He also was in A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. He was trying to take out Regina King, who played the sister of Martin Lawrence in the movie. Okay? And like I said, he played Joanna Man, too, which was a, a basketball star that got put on the bench or he was fired because of his, I guess, male ways. And he ended up becoming a woman just to keep playing basketball. Not, you know, surgically, but he put on a wig and started doing his little female thing with the, hey, how you doing? You know, anyway, the whole point is he played a female who wanted to keep playing basketball. So he joined a women's basketball team just to keep playing. But he had to pose as a female in order to get, the, you know, the chance to do that. Like I said, you want a man. One before that, Friday the 13th, a Freddy, not Freddy, but Jason movie. He played the guy with the Jerry Curl. He wore that, uh, that thrift, the red and black thriller outfit. No, you know, he had the whole outfit. He had the little long Jerry Curl, and he was in a portal potty. Jason himself ran a pipe through the back of the portal potty. I think it was a pipe. Either that or it was one of those flares that they probably had out there, you know, because they always, all the killings always end up. At that lake where he died at. So that's what he does all his killing. Of course, you already know that. But anyway, the whole point is he was that guy. That was my cousin. He even played in a TV show called Amen back in the early 80s or late 90s. You know, with Sherman Hemsley where he played a deacon. Okay? He was a deadbeat father that had a problem. And he, the deacon was trying to take care of it anyway. That's why. But anyway, the whole point is, he done did a lot of things. He even played in a TV show called Sparks, starring James Avery, a.k.a. Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince. And, yes, you said it. You know who I'm talking about. Terrence Howard. Him and my cousin played brothers on the show. And how do I know this? Because my dad's wife showed me a picture of my brother and him standing together at a family reunion. One that I missed because I was working. I was a non career employee, so I, could, I had to miss all of it. I was pissed. Anyway, so that's what I'm saying about that. I wanted to talk about the woman. I wanted to talk about the book. Now, like I said, this book is about disappearances that happen on land, in the water, and in the air. So I, I can't wait to see what it's about. And it's not going to really tell you what it's about. You may get a summary if you go to uh, canammissing.com, but you won't get, you'll probably get, um, something out of it it won't tell you too much but from what it says here let me see um let me see if it has a summary okay here we go description missing 411 law is the most recent take this off better is the most recent book in the blockbuster series about missing people by david politis this work represents another spoke in the wheel of his investigative process. Prior to missing 411, uh, prior 411 edition uh, editions have focused on, <clears throat> excuse me, have focused on land and water-related missing people. Law brings disappearances of airliners, private planes and commercial airliners into the fold. Huh, cool. 
many of these aircraft have vanished in areas of the world known as triangles oh, cool and others in known geographical clusters long established by the missing 411 books uh, missing 411 law takes water land and air disappearances and delivers and delivers an intriguing line of historical data indicating that each of these separate categories is related and of course on the thumbnail I will make sure I put a picture of the book on the thumbnail along with a couple of photos from the red carpet night uh, when the movie first um, was put out the premiere night when we, it, was, it was first premiered in New York so it was probably in Manhattan or Times Square might have been Times Square maybe I don't know but like I said, he was walking the red carpet, looking all dapper with his little three-piece suit on, looking all smooth. Man, had a little gray blazer, some black slacks, and a black shoe. Ooh, man, he was looking stylish. Go ahead, little man. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't wait to see that movie. So I want you guys, if you love me, if you love my channel, and I know you do, I'm not saying this because of that, but I'm just saying, help my little cousin out. He's a cute little thing, about seven, eight years old, getting into the fold, you know, doing what his uncle does. Okay. You know, again, Nunez Jr. You know, he may be just, he may be a cousin, though, I'm not sure. But anyway, the whole point is, yeah, he's a yeah, cousin. Yeah, he's a cousin. The whole point is that he's doing his thing. Monsters and Men, people, October 8th. I'm, I'm sorry, October 5th. Like I said, the, the dates may change. I've seen it happen a lot with movies. But as of right now, October 5th, that's on a Friday. I know this because that's payday. And I will be going to see my cousin in action to see how he's going to be doing. Because, you know, he's just getting out there. He was in a Nas video where he was like, there was a video that Nas did in New York, of course. Uh, he was running around a gated, like, wall with some other kids. And you saw him for, like, maybe a couple of seconds. And you saw Nas come around the corner and start rapping. Then he starts, he's doing a lot of ads for Teddy Ruxpin, people. They are bringing back the infamous teddy bear, Teddy Ruxpin. And he, my friends, is or was on the headlines of that ad for magazines. He's done a lot of other things for, you know, ads, you know, that being magazines and commercials or whatever. I haven't seen him in a, in a commercial yet, but he was doing this one. He was actually on this crime investigation show on on uh, TV One, where he played the son of somebody that they were talking about in the, in on the TV show. And they were sitting down in the grass, and they was like, you know, doing whatever the kids do. You know, I guess they were having a picnic, and they panned the camera up, but they kept, they panned it across so you could see his face, and then he moved out. So you, if you didn't know who he was, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't notice him, or you wouldn't you wouldn't recognize him. But he was he was right there, and then he was in a TV show that aired on BET. I think it's still on. I haven't watched it yet. I'm very disappointed in myself because she told me about it, but I hadn't thought about trying to find it. Maybe the show got canceled. I don't know. But he was on that, and now this. Okay. This right here, Monsters and Men. Please go out and see it, my friends. Support my little cousin. You know, he's trying to make it. He's trying to do his thing, being an actor and all that stuff. Who knows? He may be the next Denzel Washington. Starting out fresh as a little baby. And I don't mean baby baby. I mean just, you know, he's a baby in the field of acting. You know, the actor's guild. Maybe he, he, may, he may become big. I know he's going to get his mama straight. She's going to be having a mansion in upstate New York or coming down here to Georgia or going to Hawaii to live. You never know. She could be doing all this stuff. It's just going to be wonderful. And I'm just saying, go see. But anyway, guys, it's been 48 minutes. I've been wasting all my I ain't wasting my time. I'm doing my thing for you guys, my family, my YouTube family. I love you guys so much. I'm glad you guys love my videos. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all of you. I love you all. And I will constantly and continuously make sure that you guys get the best of the information. That's why I read it the way I do because you can get what the experts are talking about. And then after I do that, I rip it apart and tell you what I really think and what they're trying to hide. Just like what I did with the uh, sunspot thing. That was crazy. And I know they were trying to hide something. We all did. We ain't stupid. Right? We know what we talking about. Yeah. So, anyway, like I said, got to go. It's been fun. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my night because I got to go to work. Well, actually, I don't have to go to work. I put in some leaf for tomorrow, so I may do another video. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Yes. So, hit me.
idea of what you think this book is going to be all about? And do you think it's going to be a good idea? I know you're going to think it's going to be a good idea because some of you want to read it. I know you do because I got some too. I got two of them. I want to get that one too because that sounds interesting. But anyway, like I said, I got to go. I got to finish finishing out my night because I got to do my thing tomorrow with some friends. Taco night, baby, at somebody else's house. I love tacos. So I will take leave even for that. Yes. I'm just saying. But right now, I got to finish typing in my, you know, my computer for my novel. I mean, novel. And watch my favorite TV show, Ancient Aliens. They're on the right track, but they keep calling angels extraterrestrials. No, they are not. Some are beings of energy. Some are just beings who have a human form. But we just can't see them because we are, well, they are basically disconnected from our vision because they're on a higher plane. That's the reason why we can't see them, folks. That's the reason why when we take pictures of them, if they actually get a chance to see them, you see these little blurs and streaks of light that, that, that form into the shape of a person. I saw my granny. But that's a whole nother story. You know how I get I get deep. I've had a lot of deep situations, had a lot of deep things. One person called me a prophet. His words, not mine. But, you know, I try my best to meditate and do what I need to do to get the information that I have to get, especially the stuff that don't make no sense to other people. But that's the way it's supposed to be. Because I'm the mediator. Okay? I'm the mediator. I am the truth seeker and the knowledge seeker. So if I acquire some knowledge that you don't get, it's because we're so disconnected from the ultimate truth. Well, me too, partially, but I'm getting to the point where I'm understanding stuff that most people will never understand or don't want to understand because it's just too creepy. They'd rather stay in their little logical world. I don't because this world is not logical. There's a lot of illogical things happening around us and we're just not seeing it. And if we are seeing it, we're debunking it. And if we're not debunking it, we are acting like it never even happened. Because it's just too freaking weird. So, oh, and by the way, if there's anybody out there that's wondering about my eyeball, it's because I had a lazy eye. I had a little accident when I was little. And uh, it damaged the nerves to keep it from doing this. So that's why it just sits like that. So it hurts when I do this. I gotta stress my eyes to make it look straight, but it hurts. But that's the reason why my eye looks the way it does. Um, you know, something that happened when I was little, and you know, I kind of I always regretted that it actually happened because I forgot what it feels like to actually see out of both eyes. But you know, it happened for a reason. Now it also could have been free will because I yanked the plug out of the socket, which is what caused the incident. For this to happen and it struck me in my eyeball so you know I was a kid and, you know I didn't know any better I could have easily got out the way had I known to do that but it was dark in the room I'm not pitch black but it was you know shape very shady in the room so I didn't really see it coming I probably if I was a little older I probably would like that and it would just looped over my arm and hit me in the back of my head who knows but that's the reason why my friends just in case people were wondering I don't know because I don't really pay attention to all that stuff because you know I'm just being me, and I don't care what other people think. I'm not supposed to. It's not the way things work. But that's the reason why I wanted to share that, just in case people were wondering. You know, so I told you I like to be honest. I like to show you who I am. I don't like to sugarcoat things. I don't like to hide behind a screen or a green screen. Of course, you can't hide behind a green screen. You have to be in front of it. I mean, duh, that goes without saying. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. You know, I don't want to hide behind... Anything that would look at you would look at as a lie. I want to be completely honest with you people. So anything I tell you, you will know that is the truth. Even the stuff that I talk about that makes no sense to most people, even you and the trolls. Just in case you're listening, and I know you are like that person that always gives me a thumbs down, and you be the only one that does it. I see you. Don't really care because when you give me a thumbs down, I get a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand thumbs up. So it doesn't really matter. So join the club, my friend. You know you believe me. You know you like what I'm talking about. Don't be a hater. Be a contributor. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so 
I gotta go. I know I keep saying it. I just keep rambling and rambling, but I like to keep the morale going and the happiness and stuff. So, without further ado, you know how I do, people. You know how I go. Oh, sorry. You know how it goes when I end the video. Aloha, mahalo, and a hui ho. Peace out. Live long and prosper. Wait, no, that's Shaka. Live long and prosper. Wait, can I do this? Can I do that? Yep, yeah, I can. <laughs> I can do that still. Live long and prosper, people. And remember, open your mind so that you can hear the ultimate truth. And if you want to hear it, you can come here to get the answer. But the question is, will you believe it when you hear it? You think you could? Do you want to know the truth? The real truth? The truth that nobody wants any one of us to know about? And finding out who are the ones in power, the ones that control our own government, which is the reason why they act the way they act, like keeping all these darn secrets about people who disappear in national parks because of the things that happen to them when they disappear in dimensional portals. Wormholes, which are the long travel versions, and the portals, which are the short travel versions. See, a lot of people don't realize that. Wormholes are long tubes of energy that carry you from one level to another. A portal will probably carry you from one point to another on this same plane. That's the difference. And that's what happens to these people. They get sucked into this wormhole and get sent to another level where they end up never returning because there's only one direction to go. It's just like it says in the, in the TV show Sliders. We're looking at a roulette wheel with an infinite number of slots. You drop that ball and it's just going to keep on spinning until it stops at a certain number. You never know where it's going to end up once you drop that ball. There's no way of controlling the journey back. So, with that being said, those who think that these people disappeared in the national park by way of a wormhole, that will be the reason why they have never been found. Now, if you can believe that, leave a comment below this video. If you don't, then oh well. You'll find out soon enough. Not saying you'll be the one that actually it actually happens to, but that truth will come out. And you'll be like, wow, I can't believe he was right. I mean, I know. I really do, honestly. Because you got to look at it. That's the only way things can make any sense. For them to vanish without a trace? What else? How, how else could that happen? How? There's no human element in that. The government ain't even got that kind of technology. They can't see. First of all, let me explain something to you. They talk about how they can travel through time. When they talk, they had this guy with this guy with blonde hair and glasses. Said that he was personally picked by the military that his father worked for to be one of the chosen children to be used as test subjects in time travel. He said that he went all the way back to Gettysburg at the Gettysburg Address, and he pointed out. This one kid that was standing in this crowd, he said the only way you could even tell that it was him so he could be inconspicuous was for him to be standing in a certain way with his hands in his pocket and he had one of those snap caps and that little jean jacket that he that people wore back in, the, in that era. There is no such thing as time travel. Do you want to know why? Fine, I will tell you why. Because, first of all, the past, present, and future exists simultaneously in one single moment. This moment right here that we're in right now while you're listening to me and while I'm talking to you. This is the moment right here. So the past is behind me. All I got to do is look behind me or think about what I did before this moment. That's going back in the past. The present is right here, right now. The future ain't even been set yet because you haven't even took one step towards the future to create that type of future. You don't even know what that future is going to be. So how can you travel to something that never that hasn't happened yet? In a time machine. Yeah, it's a good story. And it makes a good, you know, it makes a good story for you to watch and to enjoy the, the, the idea and the fantasy of being able to travel through time to change a moment in your life. But if you were to do that, that would mean you would have to take yourself out of your very own existence. And that's impossible. You want to know why? Because you would be dead. You would not exist. Okay, there's no traveling back far enough for you to actually see yourself still. That's not how that works. If you travel, if you take your own self out of your own moment or your own existence, that's it. That's like the grandfather theory. And I think that's where that came from. 
the grandfather theory. It said you're the grandfather. You kill him, then you'll never be born because he didn't cause your own father to be born. That's the grandfather theory. You kill the grandfather, the father will never be born, therefore he would never meet your mama, and therefore they would never have sex in order for her to get pregnant and for her to have you. That's the grandfather theory. But this theory is more makes more sense. If you travel outside of your own existence, this you because you are tethered to this plane, this existence right here. If you're trying to get over there by way of time travel. You're pulling your own self out of the out of this own, out of your own existence because you were here, and all of a sudden you go through that to get there. You don't exist no more. You're taking this. It's just like the string theory with Scott Bakula. You know, you got past the middle of the string is the present, and this is the future. Crumble them up into a ball, and your existence is looped from the moment you were born up until the moment you die. So you got all these different time zones or different times in your life that you can travel to within your own timeline. Now, if you go outside that timeline, that's it. You're gone. But in the middle of any one of those timelines, you can still take yourself out of it and cease to exist. It is just that simple. I know people probably want to get on here and start, talk, start talking a lot of science saying this and that and the other. But think about it. If there was a such thing as time travel, don't you think that we would be doing it by now? Now, there is a such thing as dimensional travel. But humans alone do not have that ability. The only ones that can do that are the ones that are capable of doing it. And that would be our guardians, our guardian angels. That's how they're able to get from one point to another. That's why they know so much stuff. Everything was created to exist with a purpose, including them. Their purpose is to watch over us, to guide us. So is mine. Everybody's. But anyway, guys, that's enough deep talk. I can do some more if you want me to. If you want to get even deeper, you want to ask a question, let me know, and I will definitely answer or try to. If you want to know something, you know where to find me, right here on Insane Disappearances. And I told you, that's the reason why I call it insane disappearance because the stuff I talk about gets insane. Sometimes people don't even believe what I'm trying to say because they've never known this information. This is unknown knowledge or untold knowledge. Either one, it doesn't matter. Either way, that's what it is. So, <sighs> I know I probably just blew your mind in for a second because of what I know, but it's the truth. I'm just being honest. That's all I do is be honest. You know, I do a lot of digging. I do a lot of soul searching. I do a lot of meditation. And I find things out. And I believe them. Some people that do that and they hear something, they be like, okay, I can't believe that. That don't make no sense. And they just throw it away. I never do that. That's the reason why I talk the way I talk when I'm on my channel. I don't hold nothing back. I don't hide what is actually the truth from you. So if you're one of those people that's open-minded and you heard what I said, I did my job. Because I am a truth seeker and a knowledge seeker. That I'm here to bring you the truth, even if you don't believe it. But at the point when you do believe it, that's when you have your experience. You'd be like, wow. Like, if you look up in the sky right now, straight up, in the center of the sky, everything around this dark patch is like a, like a, a dark navy blue color. But in the center, is dark. It looks like a like a disc or a dome. You wanna know why? Now there's a story on YouTube about them creating this dome that covers up the entire earth. That's very true. If you look up in the sky, you'll see it. It's round. So that would be the edge of the dome. That's the reason why it looks like it's a big curve with a dark spot in the center. That would be the dome that's covering this planet. But we didn't build that. The government didn't build that. They did. That's right, the interdimensional beings Because of the fact that they were here And saw the atom bomb drop in the desert After Einstein, of all people, gave them the technology So after that, they saw how destructive we were And they put this dome around the planet And the only reason why it was said on YouTube the way it was Is because the government is trying to take credit for that But why? Why would you put a dome around the planet? Are you trying to say that that's a defensive way of the, uh, protecting us from the bad aliens? 
First of all, y'all the ones that made a treaty with these bad aliens. You just didn't know it until the last second when they, when you saw what they were doing, like bringing people back from these abductions in the wrong area. Some of them coming back with their faces burned off and all kinds of crazy, weird stuff. Those are the ones I call the dark ones. But y'all made, y'all signed a treaty with these beings, interdimensional beings, not aliens. Interdimensional beings, that's what they are. And y'all made a deal with them. And now you're feeling all sorry, but you still want to keep secrets. You want to know why? Because the ones in power told y'all to. And I don't think the ones in power are human. I really don't. It kind of reminded me of this episode on Sliders where Maggie Beckett uh, went to a world where she was a rising star. But only in the military because she was a hero to the American people after she died during re-entry. Because she was a, an astronaut. Or well, wanted to be an astronaut. She was actually in the military as a air fighter pilot, but she wanted to go into NASA, and she got there. And the first time she did it, she burnt on re she burnt up on reentry, and she became a national hero. Now, when they got to the core of NASA or the government, it turned out to be a gray alien. Of course, there was a, it was a human guy made to look like an alien, but it was just synonymous with like made you think. What if the ones in power were actually aliens? What if they were the ones that gave them the technology for them to build all the stuff that they built, like the TR-3Bs and all that stuff? Think about it. Think about it. Really think about it. Don't you think that if somebody was to be able to control the government, it would have to be them because they didn't want to give them the information and the technology in the first place? And the fact that they want to keep them a secret by telling lies all the time, I would imagine that would be the reason why, because they don't want them to. And that's the best way to control that situation, is to get the government to control the information that we want to find out about by not giving it out. Once again, like I said, there's something to think about. So, think about it. I gotta go, guys. I know I said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. Aloha, mahalo, and a hui ho. Peace out, people. See you once again. Later.